previously on Lost in the Pages, a Delta Green live play. The mysteries of the Dorchester House deepen as our agents inch closer to truths that border on the supernatural. Initiating the episode, head nurse Esther Samagina embarks on a tour of the Dorchester House, offering the agents a peek into its meticulous layout. Caldicia and Thomas Who, they were, she points at the map, they were on the third floor here in the men's dormitory area. Lila Mack, she was the one that had the, the writing on the wall. That was her cell there, or not cell. That's not the proper word. That was, that was her room. What are you people doing to these people? As the agents question the cryptic disappearances and the facility itself, conflicting views emerge with Murdoch and Medea butting heads with Samajina's rose-colored portrayal. As I step through these halls, the scent of despair hangs heavy in the air. Okay. The walls here have bared witness to the countless tales of shattered minds. Don't talk to me about how great this place is. Smell it in the air. Evil lingers here. This building has a rich history, sir. This used to be, you know, a, a gymnasium for a school. And now it's a psychiatric facility. It's come a long way. And she points and there's like some lockers on the wall that still exist there. A facility for men you know are lost to us. That won't be coming back. They should just be dead. Put them down. Upon request, the team is led to the male dormitories, dubbed the Pokey, where the room of a patient named T. Howe is inspected. As Agent Monkey follows behind his fellow agents, he experiences a vision. Everyone else kind of passes you and you start getting like a bit of a, a ringing in your ear. Through this center door, right before the door they told you, you see your brother come out from the room in the bottom and go up to the room in the top. Alright, I'm gonna get like a kind of panicky and nervous feeling and just kind of start moving my mouth around to try to get rid of the ringing and uh, just kind of try to try to uh pace my breathing so I don't panic myself and then I'm going to act like I didn't see it but I am going to check that room nonchalantly first prompting him to enter another patient's room Ed Myler Wists so, oh hey good morning sorry about that I opened the wrong door I was trying to get over to Thomas's room oh welcome it's not not too often I get guests ah uh, you're not from around here, I can tell. He's got this pen and paper in his hand. He's like, so um, where do you where do you come from? Inside T. Howe's room, the team uncovers an anomaly. A solitaire game with eight kings, each donning a white masquerade mask. I'm I'm going to like I'm gonna take a few of the king cards and walk over to the other agents and be like, Do you do any of you do any of you know what these are? This haunting detail triggers Monkey to recall the figure responsible for the abduction of Agent Molly. Okay, I'm not going to say anything, obviously. But I will note it, and I'm going to mention it to Murdoch later. As they continue their inspection, they find the rooms curiously pristine, with an eerie absence of personal effects, intensifying the mystery. No blood, no fingerprints. Interesting. Not even a single one. That's pretty weird. That seems weirder than just finding, like, staff fingerprints around. A curious absence of fingerprints leaves them puzzled. Questions about the mental health of the lost agents reveal harrowing tales of trauma, hinting at unseen horrors. The plot takes a dramatic turn when the agents learn one of the missing is a known figure, sparking renewed interest in the investigation. Taman? Like, Taman of and Pumbaa? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Of Lion King fame. <laughs> the actually formerly known as Tmo. In a bold move, Medea slyly persuades Monkey to hold her smuggled firearm, keeping her own hands clean. Well, then you guys can use it if you need it. It's here. It's a, it's a team gun. Oh, okay. I feel like you okay. ditching it in a room in a psychiatric clinic is asking for things to go bad no well then you guys one of one of you guys take it i'll hold it i'll hold it as we do the investigations but splitting up for efficiency murdoch and medea take on the security room unearthing an unsettling piece of footage a marionette visiting the room of lila mack person comes in but their feet appear to be floating off the floor and they have strings attached to them and they come and they turn and face towards her. She doesn't react at all. She's just looking down, hands in her knees, and then it turns back and around and walks out the door. Fuck, I knew it. I'll say under my breath. And turn to him and be like, what do you mean? What are you, what are you talking about? Because, you know, I didn't see it. Meanwhile, Monkey and Vertas explore the women's dormitories, 
encountering ghostly apparitions of familiar faces that shake them to their core. Someone just went into her room, and then I run to Leela Max. Don't room. hurt him. Make a, a sanity roll, both of you guys, as you bust into the room. Busting makes me feel good. We bust together. <laughs> you see a figure in a cloak wearing a white mask, and right as you walk into the room, it just briefly walks around the corner of the door frame and out of sight. This manifestation causes Monkey to candidly shares details of Operation Alice, unraveling threads of intrigue and deep-seated fear. Say, have you, ever heard of an, have you ever heard of an Abigail Wright in any of your previous endeavor? She is the prime target of our investigation in my last I feel like this is a good, uh, this is as good a chance as any, I'll be honest. A guy in our group last time, and one of our agents, his daughter is Agent Medea. I don't think she knows her dad was in the group, but he didn't make it back with us. We don't know where he is. And her being here is a very weird coincidence. A riveting interview with patient Ed Myler Wist leaves the agents with more questions than answers. But a covert note slipped to Murdoch suggests that Wist might know more than he's letting on. Oh shit, that's good. How did you find me? I thought you had left. In any case, they are still here at night. As the episode concludes, Medea receives a jarring phone call. Their handler is compromised. The agents are left with a chilling realization that their suspicions about their new handler were right all along. Oh shit, boys. I told you he was weird. The stage is set for an electrifying exploration of the unknown as the agents dive deeper into the shadows in their quest for truth. Why do Agent Vincent and Manny continue to present themselves to Agent Vertas and Monkey? What does Abigail Wright have to do with the Dorchester Clinic? Who is Ed Myler Wist really? And is Agent Exeter truly a demon? Find out now.